exactly like I've got some non coplanar surfaces which is very can become very annoying in the future trying to delete all it and see a lot of times it's just easier to draw something new than it is to mess with editing something and that's and you're gonna you'll see that because you're not gonna go delete all these little lines and see I don't have lines on the back that are connecting I do but something's funky not wanting to um, oh I know what it is there should be a line that goes from here to here now I can delete those I need to move it out where I can see the dang thing. I'm starting to realize I hate this. When I realize I'm halfway through something like this and I realize I should have just drawn it from scratch. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> And, and every every movie you make, you're like, dang, I could have done this. I would have been so much quicker if I had just drawn it the way I drew the first one. But it's work. I gotta get it done. And this looks funny. There's an extra line there. Dang it. goes away Dang it. I got this weird stuff going on where some of this stuff is not on the same plane and it's like a curse you know it's a curse there we go well I'm gonna do this don't I now the depressing thing about all this is that you know he can still come back and say I don't like that I want, I want that different I don't, I don't want that different oh look at this this is supposed to be There we go. Now what we'll do is your overhang goes from here Any questions? Sixteen inches that mess where I had some non coplanar junk but I'm slowly fixing it turning it into a nice truss got myself a vertical edge 
Get right there, 16. <clears throat> Sixteen is a nice overhang. It's just enough uh, where you know you get good protection for your you know stuff below. It's going to protect your siding and post and trim and all that. But it's not. Um, it doesn't hang down as you know far to like to come into your windows and stuff on your on your house that kind of thing. So it works out pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is put this back. This truss will go back against uh, this one. And what it is is it's uh, the back of it. It should just line up. Just put it right there for right now. This point should just line up with that point like that. And you'll have yourself a nice little matchy matchy going on. And then what will happen here is you'll have a beam. And I'm going to put that in this uh, this layer. Yeah. And that will go right up under here. And that'll be, um, we're just going to show it. I don't know if they're going to want to timber frame this or not. I think I've got these at six inches wide. But again, that's a uh, reason I have this in its own layer is because of um and why that is doing that Let's see I didn't get that coplanar <clears throat> one of the things that's really frustrating is um see I should have had a little I should have had a little intersection point there. See now I can just pull this out. That first uh, that first line I made looked it appeared as if it was coplanar, but it wasn't. It was if it. Uh, what I mean by it, 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 it it's easy to get. Ah, oh, damn. Sorry. <laughs> I got stuck in a wall. Uh, uh, Let's see, I need to get out of this. There we go. I just realized this uh, truss here, the bottom cord on it's messed up. Let's see, let's see. Uh, why is that not closing? See if this part will close. Oh, something is weird. Okay, enough of that. Let's go back to the beam. So, um, if that construction line was coplanar on the same plane, uh, then I should get a, there we go, you can test it like that, you can select the face that's next to it and see if it turns up as a separate face. Um, there we go. Uh, you'll see a little intersection. You can always tell, like when you're drawing a line, like the green 
the green is an endpoint. Uh, the little X is like an intersection. And so you, it kind of, once you get used to a SketchUp, you can kind of, you get clues as you're going along as to whether or not you're doing the right thing or not. Now I kind of broke my own rule here. I was drawing that beam is six inches wide because, uh, if, but if it's a if it's a timber frame, uh, it's, if it's going to be a timber addressed piece of lumber, it would probably be a five and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and push it back a half inch. And we're not in the construction documents phase right now, but I like to get things as close as I can as I'm going along because it saves work in the future. So now I'm going to bring these beams over with my push-pull tool and see it. Then we'll work out how they're going to connect with the house, the house porch beam. And I think what I have to do is raise up. Well, that didn't go all the way, did it? Yeah, it did. It's just so much lower. You see, that's what I was just getting ready to say. The I need to raise the carport roof up, and that's what this exercise is all about: is uh, doing this and starting to draw your structural members, and and then saying to yourself, "Huh, that ain't right." <laughs> so now what I'll do is raise the carport roof up. I'll grab this and this and that beam and I know that this has to really really needs to be on the same plane and once I get my axis there I want the blue axis because that's my up and down once I get that locked, I can drag it up and reference something there. And that's quite a bit higher than it was before. And I messed up because I didn't bring my truss up with it, but I can, that's easy to fix. I can lock that axis and just bring it up to, well, to here. <laughs> Top of the beam. So now, one thing that just occurred to me is that all that work may have just been for nothing because all that trust work, because this part of the, let's see how much. live streaming's doing, yeah, it's going pretty good. This um, part of the carport may have a ceiling in it. That's a question. But for now, I'm just going to copy these. At some point, they will have to close off, like you'll have a porch ceiling under here. Let me get out of this group and that won't be faded out. Like I haven't got this I haven't got the joist the ceiling joist drawn in yet, which is something I gotta do today sometime, but there will be a ceiling in here up, up here to close this off. And so that means you could just simply frame this, because this is gonna have to be framed into that. The only other option is to let's see where our Let's see if we just copy these over at the same spacing. Four or five times five times four. Oop, not 44. Oop. I should have done six. Yeah then you could at some point you could well I 
you could have these um, what will happen most likely is that if he wants this open we would run another we'll fix the spacing on this but this would run uh, to here and then these rafter tails on these rafters would get cut off so these would become uh, and then you would just start from here back you would have a roof that you would have a little ridge and I can I can show that how long have I been going <laughs> I think to be consistent well and the other thing is that these would be I can't remember how if I have all these as a but these would raise up easiest thing to do here is just to raise these up instead of trying to and, and fix the bottom of them instead of trying to fix the top oops I need to just do the <laughs> hmm let's see if I fix one of them like this how many I can get fixed or did I make them all? I made them all unique. Dang it. I know what happened was because uh, I had to do that because of the way the brackets were turned. But it's not a big deal. Why is that not cooperating? see since that goes up so high what I'll probably do is bring this base up to make it look more proportion proportionate proportional And see, so see now you got to start looking at it and saying, hmm, that post may need to be bigger and the base need to be may need to be bigger. Let's see. Let's see if we raised it up. Yeah, that looks better. And now, <laughs> uh, I may go. I had these. That, I may go ahead and bring these out uh, another two inches. Let's see. Might be easier to do it this way. I wish I had made the bases. If I was smart, I would have made the base a component. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually delete. I'm going to delete the bases. That way, if I have to change this again. I'm going to make that a component. See, aren't I smart? Now I'm going to go in and edit it. I'm going to bring, thankfully, because uh, my slab is just a, 
is like a placeholder right now. I don't have to worry about it being the right size exactly. Not yet, anyway. I think I'm going to make these another two inches bigger both ways. And so that means I need to move that back an inch that way. And fix this this way. Make it two, and then bring the whole thing back one. Why does that not look centered? Illusion. can't get my axis to lock. There we go. See how the axis is all funny? Ah, it's just weird. Something is weird. It's been giving me trouble. Troubles, man. Troubles. So now that is a uh, two foot two. So, and you say, well, that's hard to do. Well, you know, probably just make them two foot four. because that would be a two foot block with two foot, two inches of stone on either side. I should check that before I, I think this time though, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move them one inch out. I'm just gonna do it the hard way. One, sometimes the hard way is the easy way. One, because my axis is off and I'm having a hard time centering Centering it, just move it one that way, one, one. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great. What is this? This is a house that, um, I'm helping a guy with in Texas. I live in Tennessee. He found me uh, through my videos, <laughs> and which is cool. I'm a design build contractor, and so uh, I'm mainly a contractor type person, not a not a SketchUp. I mean, I know SketchUp, but uh, people are always saying you need to be doing it this way, which is fine. I don't care. I'm just saying I'm more of a builder than I am a uh, SketchUp guy. It's just a tool for me. I don't like. I'm not some SketchUp nerd, and don't take that uh, offensively if you're uh, if you're a nerd. Oh wait a minute. Let's see. What I should have done is yeah, I can do that. What I can do is copy these around, and the next time I change these bases, they'll all change. Casey says he wants them bigger or smaller. Now what I have to do though is put them in their individual groups. See, so this this has to be cut. And I have to go in here and edit this post and paste it back in place. See now it's all part of the same group. And that's kind of a pain to do, but it's not, it's easy, easy work. Cut. Now that's all that part of that group. I'm just trying to keep my groups together. So if I want to grab that post and move it, everything moves together. So I want this. Take. 
these in place. Here we go. Now we're all fixed and if we were to move our roof back, I remember that was 40 feet, right? 40 feet, I had moved it out of the way. That was, that was weird, it skipped on me there for a second. Am I still, still broadcasting? Good. So that's, now part of this will be, part of the, part of what's weird about this is, how somehow these columns are not the same height. That is bizarre. What did I do? I like the proportion of this one. So it looks like I need to move this up. Of course, even with that one. And I forgot to look and see how far that was up. I should have, you know, I could have just moved them all up. Why is it doing that? <sighs> I had more trouble out of this this drawing trying to reference other stuff. There. That, was, that is bizarre how these posts, something, something happened and it's like, that's right, I noticed this one was hanging down, so I think I, I must have forgot to Make sure this is not changing when I change something else. I think I'm going to reference that point. I'm going to try to lock that and come up here. There we go. And I'm going to try to make this one reference. That one. That's the way it should look. Gotta be careful what you're doing, man. You just you screw it up really easy if you ain't careful. There we go. That's more like it. Now, all this grade, you can notice my slab is st kind of sticking up in the air. Well, this grade will all be graded. This is what's going to show him how many ever steps he decides to step this down. Like this little connector here is not necessarily right. Again, this is a placeholder for whatever he decides to do there. It's a, it's a way of saying, hey, look at this. You need to address this. And 
I could put that line in the group, you know. But you see how my axis is all kind of wanky. Like if I turn on the axis, B axis. It's got the carports on it. But something else is weird. So anyway, so back to this part, the connector part, I'll have a, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to borrow, I'm going to borrow one of these roof boards, I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to come out of that, and I think what I'm going to do here is create a group of these little trusses and I'll paste it in there and see see that doesn't make any sense at all see how that's wanky the axis come on sketch it I know this is my fault, but you gotta work with me. You gotta fix my mistakes as I go. <laughs> I don't know how it got like that. Uh, well, I was twisting and turning the house to sit. I had Google Earth um, on, on in SketchUp. You can set your um, house to be in relation to the actual site, and I think I did that at one time. So I got the axis all screwed up. Let's make it five, that's five by, let's make it 36 for right now. I'm just making, now I'm making a new piece of decking because um, I don't want to mess with trying to spin that other one around to the right axis. So I'm going to make myself a group. See how weird that is. And again, I'm a construction guy, I'm not a... I don't know how to use SketchUp enough to just be dangerous. So now I just want to take that to there. And then this is where this gets a little interesting where this roof will come over and I think for now I'm just going to stop it on the edge of that truss. Now I'm going to try to copy this up 30 times and see where that gets us. Sometimes it's faster just to guess and then just delete. Yeah, see, I'm a good guesser though, see. Uh, sometimes it's faster just to guess and then go back and delete boards. Why is that, there's nothing like going over. Well, I'll be bugger here. didn't go all the way what in the world is this am I going crazy let me delete let me undo that wait I mean
Okay, I see what happened now. For some reason... I see what happened. Uh, it was my the two points that I selected. Um, this is not for some reason. Oh, I see what it is. This truss. I thought I checked this. Get into this. This truss is not sitting perfectly. This is what you get into sometimes when you don't pay attention. You know, that truss is not perfectly sitting. And that's because of the spacing. Let's see, what am I doing? I want to come over horizontally. I need to go back here. And see, it's just barely hanging over. And when I selected this, uh, when I selected this decking board to copy it, I, I selected this point, and then I must have I selected the other point that was over here, and each time it copied it times 28 I think is what I needed uh, it copied it up at a slight angle so by the time it got to the top it wasn't straight and there was a, it was gap yeah, sticking away out here it's funny just one little mistake you know thank you I, mean, I keep getting inside I'm assuming he would want this uh, open. Uh, now I'm going to select all those decking boards. Oops. Make a group out of them and copy them over. And mirror it. Well, this one's going to have to be spun around because my axis is weird. I have to spin it 180 degrees. There we go. Oh, what is going on now? My God. Not when I spun it around, something happened. I didn't have it. If this one doesn't work, I'm just going to draw on new decking for the other side. I'm tired of messing with it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. When I spun it around, it wasn't. 
on the right axis. I think what I did was when I spun it around my uh, yeah I must I know what it was I was on this grass which is not you have to be careful see how it, the the compass is not blue you gotta make sure you're on the blue axis when you're spinning something around if you want it to go horizontal you know, if you want it to go at the angle that this is on then you you just do it like that anyway any more questions is it lunch time yet it's 146 I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to figure out that's looking good though I like that oh yeah that works yeah because what you can do is um, you can put yourself a little fascia board on these if you want to gutter if you want to gutter this uh, which you probably will you will do because this will have a gutter yeah this will have a gutter that will connect to that gutter so you can just put yourself a little fascia board on there and um, it can be whatever material is um, as a matter of fact what you what you would have is uh, might as well just finish this out I copy one of these trusses out here and I'll make it unique and then um, all this stuff will get deleted oops not that stuff I gotta edit it first just like that and you'd have yourself a a barge rafter, a barge, uh, you know, barge rafter, a timber barge rafter. Except to go down here and close all these weird. That's not supposed to be there. Somehow, when I was making those, that worked out good. Not too much of a fuss. Let's see, now I've got myself a little component. That's a that's the barge. And see if it's only 16 inches that decking will support that barge rafter i get it at the right view here see you think you say to yourself well that looks weird well what you can also do is put yourself a bracket up here you know to support the bottom of it but really the top of it can be supported by the decking it's just two by six tongue and groove it's not going anywhere so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy that to the other end because we would have one there too like that And then you would have uh, what I'll do. One of the cool things there is kind of a cool feature <coughs> about, and that's the reason you want that's the reason you want the tongue and groove. So when you're looking up at at the carport like that, you can see it. It's all exposed, and it's really nice. Now you don't have to have this part of the beam. Like I, I like having it. You, but you don't really have to have this end beam here what I don't like is if you do that it's kind of I don't know there's two ways to do this you can actually have this 
Let me just show you. You can have this um, where this beam just exposed exposes itself. That sounds funny, doesn't it? Did that work? Yeah, you can have it come out to here like that on each end. Which probably, now that I think about it, probably works better. That way you don't have to have a bracket that holds up your, but you can do it either way. It's really, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and tell this contractor out in Texas how to do everything. He's gonna have his own means and methods, which I respect. I don't want somebody telling me how to build something. <laughs> But uh, then what you do is just do the oops, I started started to grab the whole thing. You just want then you delete that part and fix your beam. Which it looks like it doesn't have a top yet, it doesn't have a top. Well shoot, what happened? I didn't connect my line somehow. There we go. <coughs> eh. Something didn't get plainer. Dang it. Nothing can be finer than being non complainer in the morning. I should be if that's coplanar, I should be able to delete that without it doing that. So something went wanky on me. Dead gummit. Dead gummit. Dead gummit. Sometimes you just gotta be the oh what in the world. Finally, and then you can come out here. Once you fix it like that, you can come out here and say, well, what's the dang problem? And the problem is that little line right there, this was the right dimension right here. This is where it gets trashy. You know, this is where you start getting frustrated and saying, why, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Okay, but the point is, <laughs> let's see if this side's gonna act, act weird too, if I can keep from screwing it up. Okay, I'm connected to that point, I'm connected to that point, I should be able to delete. No, ain't gonna be able to do it, let's see. Let's just delete this, this, and our little whatever mistakes we made on the end right here, and then we'll copy this over with the push-pull tool. Now we should be able to delete, yeah, delete that line. 
So the point is, you see, I can I could have built that whole thing quicker, but uh, but well, here's part of the thing right here. It just occurred to me if you just run this beam out, you know, you don't have to have the cross beam coming this way. But if you don't if you don't have it, then is that? Okay, good. Uh, then, you know, you got to say to yourself, well, what about this? You know, do I run this brace up then? Or not have this brace? Or do you run it up to here? It gets kind of... Then you start to question yourself. You say to yourself, self, why the... What was I doing again? yourself a little reference this is just like uh, just an example for some reason I can't get that to reference but you see that would be kind of weird I think like that so I'm gonna say I'm gonna go all the way back to my original I'm gonna have I'm gonna reference this part of the video, the video. I'm gonna go all the way back to here. Thank God for the undo button. Did I undo that? No. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say I like it better with the beam all the way around because what you can do then is you got your angle brackets and what you're trying to do with these brackets is and they may need to be a little bigger now you're trying to you're trying to stabilize this thing because the trusses will stabilize the roof you know this hole from here up but these are going to want to be like chicken legs wobbling around if you're not careful so the connection of this column to this base is going to be really important and i'll have to detail that and you know how this how deep these you know need to go in the ground probably three four feet so they don't you know wobble back and forth and then you're going to need rebar and steel connections coming up through here and that's going to need to be tight because the first time you have a tornado out there in texas you'll be out uh, it'll be like uh in the land of Oz, what was it the land of oz or whatever what's the movie <laughs> the wizard of oz you walk out your front door and your 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 porta cachere roof will be flying off into the distance if you don't get all that tied together good. Well, this video this video is gone a long time, so I'm going to cut it off here. Let's see if there's anything I can do to clean this up before I go. I'm going to turn this axis off and then just kind of give you a brief overview of it and how far does that put us now above if we were to pull this down that's 13 feet so what you have to decide is you could have a situation where the carport steps back down and then this part of the roof do i make that a group yeah is like up here like that i get it in line like that or whatever and then um then see this whole roof could step back down but that's just part of the choices that we need to make and you know at this point i'm talking to johnny johnny so that's a good uh bit of information to chew on for the car the, the connector and the carport and in the end the drawings are just a guide right when you get out there and you start building this thing you may say hmm uh, something looks weird about this let's do it this way and that's fine I'm just trying to we're just trying to get it to a point to where you can get pricing and 
have a guide and have a, something to talk about with your builder when you start. And I appreciate everybody watching this series. Uh, it will continue because I have a lot of work to do. It's kind of long and maybe boring, but on the other hand, you get to see how things are built. But, uh, thanks a lot.